Good morning, everyone, and all of you watching online. It's so wonderful to be together and, uh, and see you all. Perhaps you can uh, unmute yourself, uh, your videos for a little while so that we can uh, see all your beautiful faces and uh, fellowship with you. Thank you, thank you. Great, great, great. Oh, so beautiful, wonderful, thank you. <clears throat> And we want to especially thank you for all your prayers and love uh, for uh, all of us, Esther's family, especially as today marks eight days since her, her dad went to be with the Lord. And some of you don't know Pastor Joseph uh, personally, but he was an amazing uh, man of God. And uh, the anointing upon his life is on our church. Uh, because he's the founder of New Life and uh, he's the one who uh, sent us out, uh, recognized the call of God on our lives and sent us out, um, you know, 34 years ago. And that's why we're here today. And we believe that that same anointing is upon us. And as I was sharing at the funeral, that um, as he has gone to be with the Lord, I believe his mantle, his anointing, his vision, his passion is going to be upon us so that now there's not just one Pastor Joseph, but there are many Pastor Josephs. Amen. And uh, I, I would like you, those of you who know him, uh, who have met him, who've been impacted by his life, to go to um, his website, pastorjoseph.in, pastorjoseph.in, and maybe share a tribute, uh, share something uh, about his life that has impacted you because that's going to be a wonderful memorial. And so I decided that I would uh, preach a series of messages as tribute to Pastor Joseph. And uh, today I want to talk about vision, that I need vision. Pastor Joseph was a man of vision. Uh, in 1957, the year I was born, uh, he, he came to know the Lord as a young man of 25. And then in the year, coincidentally, this is wonderful, in 1980, when God touched me and I got saved, that same year, I didn't know Pastor Joseph, the same year, God gave him a powerful vision, a compelling vision, a vision in which he, uh, God uh, enabled him to claim one-tenth of the city of M Mumbai, very staggering in those days. Ten Out of 10 million people, he launched Operation 10 Million to claim 1 million for Christ. And uh, today, so many years later, uh, we see there's uh, multiple churches in Mumbai and so many believers, so many people have come to the Lord. And a lot of these new churches can trace their origins to new life. So praise the Lord. And today I want to challenge us the, to be people of vision. Would you like to know how you can have vision? You know, the fact that you're a believer is that you have vision. Why? Because as a blind man said, you know, when Jesus healed him, he says, one thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. Amen. So all of us who were blind, who were in darkness, as the Bible, uh, God tells Paul that uh, he was going to send him to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light. And Paul says that whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Amen. And so we have vision today. And if you, if you don't have vision, if you feel like you don't know the Lord, I believe today is a wonderful day when you can open your heart and ask Jesus to come in and he will give you light. He will turn you from darkness to light. He will take away the veil that's over your eyes and that you may be able to see. You know, my testimony about a compelling vision is when uh, I got saved in the U.S. and then uh, I had to decide about whether to stay on in America or come back. And it was that time that God gave me a compelling vision, a vision for preaching the gospel. He really put in my heart that I couldn't stay on in America where there was a statistic that a, everybody in that country had at least four opportunities in their lifetime to hear the gospel. But there were many people in my country who had never ever heard the gospel. And so God put in my heart this vision and this passion to go back 
although it was very difficult my whole life i was geared to uh, you know wanting to stay in america but god put in my heart to come back and that's why i'm here today and then through that and god called esther and me uh, to leave everything and come serve the lord in north india it is all because of this vision and then god when we when i met pastor joseph that vision for souls was imparted to us and it is still there you know somebody asked helen keller she was a, a very accomplished woman who was born blind and deaf so imagine that she couldn't speak because she was deaf but she learned she overcame she could hear people by touching their vocal cords and she could uh, you know communicate uh, an amazing woman and somebody asked her helen what could be worse than being born blind and she replied the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision having sight but no vision able to see physically but having no spiritual vision having no understanding having no clarity not able to see beyond the natural i want to read for us a story from the bible from exodus chapter 2 about moses can we open our bibles to exodus chapter 2 verses 1 to 10 now a man of the tribe of levi married a levite woman and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son when she saw that he was a fine child she hid him for 3 months but when she could hide him no longer she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the nile His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. When Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendants were walking along the river bank, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby he was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, "Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you?" Yes go she answered and the girl went and got the baby's mother Pharaoh's daughter said to her take this baby and nurse him for me and i will pay you so the woman took the baby and nursed him and the child grew older when the child grew older she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son she named him Moses saying i drew him out of the water hallelujah what a wonderful story and then from the story i want us to see a few things about vision about getting a vision what a vision can do to our lives how it can transform us four points i want us to see today that a vision from god a compelling vision it may, helps us to see beyond the natural secondly it inspires faith thirdly it often seems impossible and finally it will always come to pass the bible says in our passage here that moses mother saw amen praise god there were so many other mothers there they had male babies and according to the king's edict the order they had to throw those babies into the nile river basically throw them to the crocodiles now kill them drown them get rid of them there were too many hebrews and pharaoh said we've got to somehow do something about controlling this population they're becoming too great and so he, this was his command you know the book of hebrews chapter 11 that great uh, chapter of faith in hebrews chapter 11 talking about moses it says by in verse 23 by faith moses parents hid him for 3 months after he was born because they saw that he was no ordinary child they saw you know vision begins with seeing you know you look at every baby and every parent thinks oh baby so cute oh so lovely maybe some other parents look and say it looks like a like a wrinkled up old man you know but the for the parents that baby the cutest thing on the planet and can you imagine all these parents looking at their cute little hebrew baby boys and they say oh no sorry but king says throw you in the river but these parents they look at a baby boy and they say wow there's something amazing 
they saw that he was no ordinary child that he was a fine child in the book of exodus it says they saw something from god there was a compelling vision a vision that enabled them to defy the king's edict the other mothers were just throwing their babies into the nile but this mother says no i see something that is great something beyond the natural i have a vision from god that this child perhaps will be the deliverer of israel will get us out of our captivity this child will grow up one day to be a great man they had vision you know uh, it's very important vision is so important in the book of proverbs chapter 29 proverbs 29 and verse 18 reading from the passion translation says when there is no clear prophetic vision people quickly wander astray when there's no clear prophetic vision people quickly wander astray now i was thinking about last week when we talked about deception the deception of eve and i was uh, jokingly sharing with you how eve had the lightest bible just one commandment and if she had to meditate on it day and night all she had to do is say eat from all the trees don't eat from the tree in the middle eat from all the trees don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that's just one commandment she had but you know often we are surrounded by scripture we are sur surrounded by the bible we are surrounded by the commands of god but unless it becomes a compelling revelation we're not willing to die for it we were talking about post pentecost and how the disciples were so bold why were they so bold why were they willing to defy the edict the command of the rulers and say judge for yourselves it is is it right for us to obey you or to obey god and they declared that they would not stop preaching in the name of jesus why they had that compelling vision they had met the Lord Jesus Christ. They had heard the Great Commission. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And their vision gripped their heart. Talking about Pastor Joseph, I remember when I came to India, and it was in 1984, but uh, Pastor Joseph was already possessed by the vision. You know, it's like people were, were thinking, what's wrong with this guy? He's like so crazy all the time. He can just talk about the vision, talk about souls, talk about winning Mumbai, talk about sending people out, taking the gospel, you know, uh, ensuring that everyone gets to hear. And right till, you know, the time of his passing, uh, he was, even while he was in the bed, whenever the doorbell rang, he was concerned that somebody had come to the door. Had we given him a New Testament? Had we shared the gospel? Is his vision being fulfilled? I want to challenge us today. Many of us may be living in a very natural level of life. You know, roti, kapra, makan, career, thinking about your life what to do, my children, how to get this money, how to, uh, you know, uh, further my career, how to get a promotion. You know, sometimes all our prayer uh, lines are jammed with all these prayer requests about me, my health, my life, my child, my problem. All are very important. Don't get me wrong. These are very important, but our lives are consumed by ourselves. How many times do we get a prayer request Oh, pray for me? I want to win souls. I want to make disciples. I want to preach the gospel or oh, pray for me. I got persecuted, but I want to be more bold. Without where there is no clear prophetic vision, people quickly wander astray. I want to ask you today, if you're wandering astray, perhaps you've lost the vision. And I believe today, as I was sharing at the funeral, and those of you who watched the funeral video, I was sharing about, you know, death is actually can be a victory. And one Pastor Joseph is gone, but there can be many Pastor Josephs. There can be all of us here who are willing to catch the vision, willing to let the mantle fall upon us, and willing to say, God, here I am. Use me like you used your servant, Pastor Joseph. Give me a compelling vision, a vision to transform lives, a vision for the gospel, a vision to do what you called us to do. Amen. Vision 
Firstly, it sees beyond the natural. I want to encourage you that you begin to start looking beyond what you're seeing and say, God, show me, speak to me. Lord, give me a vision. You know, like Moses' parents, they had a vision for this child. They saw beyond this baby. He is no ordinary child. This is a special child. Will you look in your life and say, God, speak to me through my circumstances. I want to see beyond the natural. I don't want to be just seeing all the surface things, but I want you to speak to me. The second thing I want us to see that vision inspires faith. It says in verse two of our text that she hid him for three months. For three months, you know, because this vision inspired faith in us. She said, no, I will not obey the king's command. I will not throw my baby into the river for three months because faith was in her heart. Amen. And in verse 23 of Hebrews 11, it says, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Hallelujah. They were not afraid. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. They came by a revelation. They received this vision that this Moses was a special baby. And so they says they were not afraid of the king's edict. You know, I want to ask you today, what are you afraid of? And in all those places that we are afraid of, it's because we don't have a revelation. Are you afraid of Corona? You don't have a revelation perhaps that God is for you. That is God is your healer. God is the one who protect you. He will keep you. He will work everything together for good in your life. Amen. Faith makes one fearless amen and faith comes by revelation and faith comes by a vision faith comes when god shows you something that's beyond the natural his mother jochebed her name was uh, was able to defy the king he said i will not throw my kid into the river you know all the other mothers probably knew that they should not do this it's not right right to kill babies but the king says, kill those baby boys, and they just obey, right? But Jochebed, because of the vision she had, it inspired faith in her, and she defied the king's edict, amen? God is looking for people today, for you and me, who will defy the edicts all around us, even the peer pressure around you, even the maybe governmental pressure or whatever pressure around you will defy and say, no, I will not disobey the command of the Lord. I want to be like Peter and John it says, we cannot deny the command of God. Judge for yourself. Is it right for us to obey you or to obey God? You know, and Jochebed was able to do it. You know, we all desperately need vision today. You know, without this vision, our lives will not have direction. We need to have vision for our children, for their destiny. We need to have a vision for our life. Why am I on earth for? Is it just to have a career and get have a family and, and do well and be comfortable and then die and go to be with Jesus? Is that all our vision or is the vision God has given us the great commission? He said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy Spirit. You know, often we just give lip service to, ha, ah, yes, 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 it's written in the Bible. I know in Matthew 28, but is that a vision? Is it a compelling vision? Has it inspired faith in you that you step out of your comfort zone to do that which God has called us, amen? Faith, vision makes us see beyond the natural. It inspires faith. But sometimes, you know, a vision from God, it becomes too much. And the Bible says in Exodus 2 verse 3 in our text, it says, when she could hide him no longer. Okay, that baby Moses had powerful lungs. And three months he was crying louder than any other kid. And, you know, you can imagine the parents trying to put their hand over his mouth. Hush, hush, Moses, stop making noise. The soldiers outside, you know, they're going to catch us. But Moses was a tough cookie. And it says they could hide him no longer. They could hide him no longer. You know, and sometimes a vision can get too big for us. We saw that for in Pastor Joseph's life also. The vision was so big. It was so massive. 
and so many problems. You know, sometimes uh, he, he came to a point of almost giving up. And it says here about Moses' parents, what did they do? Did they say, okay, one, two, three, and throw him in the river? No, it says they made a basket for him, a basket of papyrus, and they coated it with tar and pitch, and they placed the child in it, and they put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. Amen. You know, I want to encourage us that even your kids, if, if the, your, their vision becomes too much for you, you don't know what to do. It's like, uh, God, I don't know what to do. It's so difficult. Don't just throw your kids into the world, but put them on the cross, you know, put them into the hands of the Lord. This basket, I believe, speaks of the cross, speaks of the wood of the cross, and that task speaks of the blood of Jesus. Amen. So they did their best they said okay we'll obey the king but we won't obey the king amen we'll obey the king it's becoming too hard to hide him but we put him on the cross lord we release this vision to you we know he's no ordinary child we've seen beyond the natural we by faith have kept him for three months now we can't do it anymore but god we just hand him to you we put him on the cross on the altar of the cross we yield that vision back to you god it's almost like we're dying to our vision you can imagine the parents of moses they're not even willing to look Look at that basket but there's a sister her name is Miriam and Miriam's got the vision and Miriam is focused on that basket where is it going where is it going that's the vision of God he's no ordinary child I must focus on the vision you know I want to encourage us through this story that even when you go through death of a vision some of us may be going through death of a vision today Maybe it's a, a vision of a job, a career, maybe a business, maybe a relationship that's just gone. And you're wondering, oh God, this is death. I'm facing death of my vision. I'm facing death of something that I believe, God, you gave me. What can I do, God? What can I, I want to encourage you, put it on the cross because God is able to work through death. Amen. Death is not a finality, but death is a doorway to the resurrection. Hallelujah. And, and so they released this little baby in the little boat in the cross and on the, in the blood of Jesus. And can you imagine what happens? Moses is drawn out of the river. Hallelujah. Moses went through a death and a resurrection. What they released into the Nile River was a condemned slave baby. What came out was the prince of Egypt. Hallelujah. God is able to work through your difficulty, work through your sorrows, work through your pain, work through your death. He's a redemptive God and he will turn it around. Amen. In all things, he works together for our good. Hallelujah. We believe in this season as a tribute to Pastor Joseph that even as he's gone, God's going to turn it around. His vision is going to go forward and there are many more who are going to catch the mantle and going to run with the vision. Amen. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 3. God is saying to Habakkuk, For still the vision awaits the appointed time. You know, this is an encouraging word to us. Still the vision, every vision of God, it awaits an appointed time. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come to pass. It will not delay. You know, the Gamaliel principle in the book of Acts, when they were wondering what to do with his disciples, he said, don't worry about it. If it is from man, it will fizzle out. But if it is from God, then you and I will be fighting against God. Amen. You know, a vision from God will always come to pass. Pharaoh's daughter pulled that baby out and she named him Moses. Hallelujah. Amen. All of us can be named Moses here today. Because we were pulled out. We were pulled out of death. We were pulled out. Remember your baptism? You were pulled out, right? Your pastor didn't leave you underwater. You're alive. Amen. You're, you're a Moses. Amen. You were pulled out of death. You were pulled out of darkness. You were pulled out of without God and without hope. You were pulled out. And Moses was pulled out. Why? Because he could become a leader. One day he would pull them out. Two million people. He would pull them out of Egypt. Why? Because God pulled him out of that river. Amen. God had a vision for his life. God had a purpose for his life. All the other baby boys of his age, they were gone. 
but God saved Moses because he has a vision. Amen. A vision from God will always come to pass. Moses was no ordinary child. He became the prince of Egypt. And the impartation of that vision, I want us to see that this mother, you know, imparted. If you have vision, it doesn't stay to yourself, right? It got imparted to this little girl. And, he, and she, Miriam, kept looking and kept following. You know, and see the impartation of the vision into, uh, into Moses. He was raised a prince in Egypt. He could have been an Egyptian. But because of the impartation, this mother was called to nurse her own baby. And it's so ironic that she had to nurse her own baby and, and the uh, daughter of Pharaoh says, I'll pay you for it. How many of you moms got paid for nursing your babies? If God has a sense of humor. You go through that death and resurrection and God says, I'm going to look after you. I'm going to pay you. I'm going to compensate you. Because you're focused on my vision, you saw my vision, you looked beyond the natural, you didn't obey the king's edict, you hid that baby, you put him in the boat, I'm going to pay you for it. Hallelujah. Some of you are thinking, oh, if I follow the Lord, if I give up my job and my career, then who's going to look after me? Who's going to look after my children? Esther and I here, we are testaments to all of you. 34 years we've been serving the Lord. And our children have not suffered. They are not begging bread. One of our kids, Danny, is going to move into his new house this month. How is that possible? It's all by faith. Amen. It's all because of the vision. It's all because we do what God puts on our heart to do. Amen. And, when, and Pastor Joseph, he said, when God orders the biryani, he pays the bill. You order biryani, you pay the bill. Okay. Some of you are waiting for your swiggy. So I should close. Uh, I want to encourage us today that Moses uh, finally, you know, it says in, in the book of Hebrews, what a, what a testimony of this, that he refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Imagine growing up in the palace, he refused. Why? Because of the impartation of that vision. Imagine his mother nursing him, raising him up, telling him, Moses, you are not an Egyptian. You are an Israelite. You are not an ordinary child. You are a child of destiny. There's a vision for your life. Don't get stuck in these ways. Don't get stuck in the world, in all the hedonism of Egypt. I, wa I want you to know that God has a purpose. It says in Hebrews 11 verse 25, He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. Hallelujah. You know, if you have a vision, it's going to keep you away from all these stupid things around. You know, the, the sin that is so easily entangled, the book of Hebrews says, you know, it's going to keep us away because that vision is going to keep us focused on what God has for our life. Amen. As we come to the communion table today, you know, I want, it, I want you to bring your elements and I want you to see that you know, on the cross, Jesus went to the cross because of a vision. Again, in the book of Hebrews, it says, chapter 12, verse 2, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, for the joy set before him endured the cross. Amen. Why was he able to go to the cross? It was so hard. He said, Father, if possible, take it away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. How could he do that? It says, for the joy set before him. Amen. Amen. I believe he had a, like a giant screen in front of him. And he could see all our faces, like I'm seeing your faces now. He said, for the joy set before him. So many sons and daughters coming into glory. Daddy, I'm willing to go to the cross. I want to encourage us today. Will you get your vision for your life from God? As we break bread, let us commit to that. Let's partake. The joy set before him, he shed every drop of his precious blood. Let us partake. I want to ask us to do something unusual. Could you put your 
hands on your eyes and we're going to ask God for vision for our lives. We're going to ask God for that mantle, the anointing of Pastor Joseph of vision to come upon our lives. Father, we pray in Jesus name. Touch each one of us afresh. We are in New Life Church. It's no accident. We are in this church founded by a man of vision. And Lord, like you gave Pastor Joseph this compelling vision that directed his life, that prospered his life, that imp impacted so many people. Lord, touch our eyes today and give us a single-minded vision to serve you. God, to do your will for our lives. Father, I pray, take scales of our lives where we've been looking at wrong things, God. Things have been blocking. And Lord, give us clear vision today. Thank you for each one, Lord, touching their eyes today symbolically. And I pray the anointing of the Holy Spirit for clear, clear vision to come upon all our church. Father, we're believing our church people will be visionaries. Not stuck by the natural, but seeing beyond, seeing the invisible, seeing God, what you have for us, what you have for our city, what you have for our nation. Lord, we know if we seek you first, your kingdom and your righteousness, everything else will be added unto us. So bless your people, Father God, I pray today and be with each one in Jesus name. Amen.